Well, hey there, everybody. It's Laurie the Warrior. And yes, this is a different room. This is a different day. And I am by myself. <laughs> I sat to to edit my journey video for you all. And I realized that I had inadvertently deleted my portion of the video. Well, I deleted the whole damn thing. So after I edited Michelle's, I formatted the, the SD card for, for us to record our podcast and it was gone. So anyways, here I am right now, right here with you all to talk to you and share with you my spiritual journey. <laughs> we'll try this again. You know, my spiritual journey has been in ebbs and flows and it, it, it goes in, you know, I'll go hard and heavy, if you will. And then it will back off for a bit and I'll kind of, it's kind of like, you know, it has to absorb into my cells and into my being. And then I go back into learning, into gaining knowledge and then it absorbs. And that's, that's really how it's been for me, this whole journey. And then will come the lessons and in those lessons, well, that's where the greatest things happen. So in about, oh, 2006, my gram was diagnosed with cancer and I was in the room when that happened and the doctor gave her six months and when we left the doctor I will never forget her saying they gave me six months well that's what they say I will tell them when I am done they're not going to tell me I will tell them when I am done well she did <laughs> Six years later, six years later is when she took her last breath and left this, this physical reality. And I was in the room when that happened as well. You see, she was the first to hold me. When I was wheeled out of the delivery room, she was the first to hold me. And I was with her when she took her last breath. She taught me and still teaches me. She taught me so much in my life. I wouldn't be where I am or who I am today without her teachings. I can honestly tell you that. And I will tell you right now, each and every time that I tell the story that I'm about to tell you, I get goosebumps. When I was in the room, when she took her last breath, she was in palliative care and I had spent the day, well, I spent four days with her. She was non-communicative and verbally non-communicative, but we could tell things that she was trying to communicate. You know, she would, she would make some noises. She would fidget when she was uncomfortable and so forth. But I knew that she was back and forth between this this reality and another and that more and more she was forth rather than back and the morning of her passing my mom had left to go get something to eat so Graham and I had some time alone and I I shut the lights off because the room was bright and I shut the lights off and I turned her favorite music on. I just made it peaceful for her. And up until this moment, I, I hadn't released her. I hadn't told her that it was okay to go. So I was just kind of puttering, if you will, around the room. And I went and I sat down beside her bed and I didn't want to hold her hands because the cancer had moved into her bones and they had told us that she was extremely, extremely sore and that just touching her hurt. It was excruciating. So I just, I got close to her and I said, Graham, it's okay. You can, you can go. I'm going to be just fine. I have met the love of my life and I'm going to be okay. I found where I belong. And I'm going to be okay. And 
she made a noise and I knew she had heard me. And it wasn't too long after that my mom came back and we went about the day and just, you know, did our things and spent the day with her. Continued on with that feeling the whole day. We lit candles and made it a very, you know, peaceful, nice day. Later on that evening, we knew that the time was coming and she took her last breath and there's the goosebumps. <laughs> and as she took her last breath, I looked up to the ceiling and up to the sky and I said, with this huge smile on my face, can you feel that? Oh my God, can you feel that? that and I don't know if my mom felt it or not but I know I did and I know now as I did then that it was her soul and it was it was God it was source it was the creator in the room because we are all one we are all love and that's what I felt was immense love a love like I have never a warmth like I have never felt before a safety like I have never felt before when I tell you that I could have stayed in that room for the rest of my life I am not joking I could have stayed in that room for the rest of my life and I would have been okay and I would have been okay. That feeling. That feeling. Leveled things up for me. I knew then that there is definitely, absolutely, without a doubt, more to this world than meets the eye. Whenever I have my doubt, Whenever I'm questioning, what is this all for? Why are we here? That feeling I remember. That is what we are all here for. Love. We are here for love. We are here to experience that and to give that, to share in that. No doubt in my mind. No doubt. And that is why I am here with Michelle creating the healing rainbow is to help others to share love and to spread the light. That is why. Everybody take care, and I'll talk to you later.